I got an echo coming from my end. Wait. Oh, no. How about... Okay. Yeah, it's better. Uh, all right. How do I get rid of this music? All right. Three, two, one. Action. Well, I guess we're already live. Um, welcome back, everybody, to episode. I don't know what episode this is, but episode 70 something of the Scarlet and Blue show. New platform we're on. We're upgrading, boys. Boys and girls, we're upgrading. Garrison can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, there we go. I can hear you. Sorry about that. I was reading something. Sorry. Yep. No, we're we are live. We're back, and the mm -hmm. best news is is that we are days away from college football being back. Everybody's yep. excited. I mean, all of our friends online who do similar shows. Obviously, there's a new buzz, new energy. Everyone, mm -hmm. of course, in the major media, and, of, and everybody on Netflix and at the NCAA offices in Indianapolis. Everyone's excited. College football is back. Yeah, and honestly, I think even more so we're getting – I mean, college football's kind of been back, I guess, but we're getting actual football, you know, and – I was on the phone with a friend earlier, and uh, well, that like she was Lawson, and man, I'm just excited to watch everybody play. I think this is a really cool week. Uh, a lot of new faces for a lot of new teams, or for a lot of good teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, if if you look at just like some of the like the last few years, I keep saying, oh, I think this is going to be the best year we've had, and every year that the, the current year surpasses the last. So. Um, no, I'm really excited, man. We have big. We have one big game. Uh, what LS, LSU and USC? Uh, that's uh, Sunday. Georgia I Clemson. That's a great game. I think they're going to dog. Oh, they're going to dog walk. <laughs> that's. I, I, I guess brand wise, you think, you're right. Brand wise, you're right. You are. Right. You think Georgia? Okay, well, we'll talk. About, well, I mean, we get the picks. All right, let's do a quick. Oh, it was, quick we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that Thursday. All right, all right. We'll hold till Thursday. But I think there's some. Wow, wow, Garrison coming out hot with. Some takes mm. here. I feel like there's some decent games, but all right, fine. By the way, speaking of, we have we have news also. I mean, regarding the show and our, uh, I, I guess another show. Yes, go for it. Well, uh, what a couple months ago was it now? You called me and uh, asked how I would feel about joining you on Michigan Sports Radio to call the South Christian games with you, and. It was a resounding yes. And so Bryce and I, everyone, we will be uh, on some Michigan Sports Radio calling the South Christian High School football games where we actually play football and um, our all high school alma mater. Um, when the time comes, I mean, we have a game this Friday against our rival Grandpa's Christian. If you have time, tune in. We would love for you guys to tune in. And um, I mean, it would mean a lot to us. But i um, very excited. Also, we will be live from here on out starting Thursday. So you will have the opportunity to, you know, interact with us, join us in the conversation of whether it be Ohio State football or the greater landscape. And um, we're excited to bring that to you all. That's right. That's right. You know, Michigan Sports Radio, um, it sounds if you're if you're listening to the show and you're outside of Michigan, you think Michigan Sports Radio is that a Michigan Wolverines <laughs> network. It's not. It's the general state of Michigan. Uh, mm -hmm. You see the branding. There's no there's no maze in it. So it is a the, probably the biggest a broadcasting company for high school sports in the States, probably in this region, I'd argue in the mm -hmm. Midwest. And so awesome dudes over there. Uh, it's something that our pops popses, our dads have been doing yeah. and they've each moved on to greater endeavors. And so we get to come <laughs> in and, and take on, take on the role and take on the mantle. So yeah, tune in every Friday night. Uh, if you're in West Michigan, you're probably familiar with it. You probably see some of your teams being broadcasted on those networks. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to just listen to your boys, commentate be the next uh you want to be you want to be gus and joel or you want to be kirk and chris we can figure out who our identities are later but if you want to see us do that tune in michigansportsradio.com <laughs> no and i will say this and uh you know hopefully you know our dads are watching i think we're gonna be better than you guys and it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a long shot in saying it but i think we can do it bryce i think we can I think so. They were, I mean, they were great. Yeah. But I think we can. I think we can. How many so, years were they together? Long time. Don't, I don't know the answer to that. Well, seven time. years? Yeah. And then a couple state championships in there. It's been fun. All right. So go we'll tune into that. Also, too, even though we have new platforms, we're doing new things, we don't forget about those that supported us. Stock the bar. 
Garrison Dean with the best, the most delicious vodka on mm-hmm. the planet in the state. Smooth taste with a purpose. Uh, they donate a portion of every bottle sold to the Boys and Girls Club. So go get yours at stockdebar.com. And it's the only vodka I drink. Yep. <laughs> the yep. only. And uh, we'll be in, I'll be in Ann Arbor on Saturday. May have to bring a bottle. And if anyone's going to be in Ann Arbor on Saturday night, hit me up, DM, and I'd love to say hi. See you guys are there. We're already catching up with a few folks from this world there and super fired up. Hey, you know what? What? Well, are you going with your dad? Whole fam's going. Here, is there is there another car seat? Like not car seat, but you know, yeah, car seat. <laughs> Let me go. I'll listen. I'll, I'll come there, hang out with you guys, tailgate, and I'll go watch the game at Zingerman's. That would be fun. All right, we can get you to do that. Garrison, we had an extra ticket. I didn't even think to ask you because I didn't think you'd want to go. Oh, that's a, that's a miss on my part. Hey, hand up. Wait, that's you said there fault. was. There was, yeah. It's since been given. That's tough. That's that's bad on my that's part. All right. No, no, no. It's okay. I I understand why you wouldn't. I mean, why well, I, I tweeted it was it yesterday or last night or the earliest morning about how I called you during the uh, halftime of the Michigan Hawaii game, and I gave Bryce maybe a five minute call slash rant of how much I hated it, <laughs> Ann Arbor, and everything you about it. it. You love it. Except for those two really nice uh, Wolverine fans I met at that bowling alley. I went there to get a burger because it was a rain delay. But um, no, we talked enough about that. We got, we got stuff to talk about. We do. We do. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So if you'd be in Ann Arbor, let us know. Um, great. All right. Let's, let's, let's dive right in the, fr- the first topic. And I think it's got to be because again, we'll record on – Friday or Thursday, sorry, and mm-hmm. we'll preview um, for Fresno and Akron and just talk about the seasons. And um, we'll, I'm just touching a few things tonight too. But I want to talk about the Stallions doc. Did you watch it yet? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. I, I almost wanted to stay up till 3 a.m. to watch when it officially came out. By I watched it during my lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. I wasn't going to stay up too late, but I got thoughts. I figure I'll bounce them off. And mm-hmm. We will uh, we'll talk about it. So if you haven't watched it on Netflix, go watch it. Um, maybe just pause this, go watch it, and then pick it back up where you left off. Yeah. But at the same time, too, I saw a tweet today. I forget who it was from. But basically it said, watching the show isn't going to change your mind. So if you wanted to find reason that Stallions you know, was, is, is innocent, probably not going to find it. If you want to find reasons why Michigan should get the death penalty, probably not going to find it. And then I have a lot of places in between. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I do. And by the way, that, I think that was Tom Fornelli on uh, Cover 3. Okay, shout out yep. Tom Fornelli. My bad. I did not – I forgot who said that. But credit to where credit's due. So, yeah, yeah I, I, that's the way I, – I really wanted – Garrison, I really wanted to watch it and say and, – and, and have something come out where I was like, yes – we're, we're, I was, I was right. We're, yeah. you guys were all, not necessarily <laughs> I was right, but you guys are all super wrong. And uh-huh. so we'll get into that, but it was, it was really interesting. I think to kick things off, that guy is nuts. I thought I loved my team. <laughs> not compared it, to him. Not compared to that guy. <laughs> 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 not compared to oh man yeah although i'm seeing some good tweets here uh yeah okay yeah the, I, I will say this though. i will say this a couple things one i thought it was really interesting that everyone that this kind of proved what i think there was still a lot of debate on everyone on staff had everyone has someone on staff to decipher signs and so there was this whole thing going around where oh science stealing was illegal it's not mm-hmm. So that I think that was good. That was almost cleared up because I feel like, and maybe by now everyone gets it, but it felt like there was a time where people thought, "Oh no, science stealing was illegal." It's I, not. I don't. I don't think anyone. I won't stay here long, but I don't think anyone was arguing that science stealing isn't normal. It was about how you go about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had people arguing that for a while. Not you, not you, mm-hmm. but others. Then I'll say this. 
every program wishes they had a Connor Stallions type no. person on staff. Yes. And Dave Portnoy even said it in the episode in the oh. show later on. I took this, I wrote this down before, and then uh -huh. as obviously the episode or the this the show went on, I saw it again. And as I saw Dave Portnoy say that, everybody wants that. Coaches are gonna be asking, where can we find these mm -hmm. loony bins? These I guess the, the, the Naval Academy, I guess. <laughs> and dude, there are Things people to out say there. that. Yeah, huh? there there are enough people out there. Ohio State has enough psychopaths in that fan base that will gladly take on that mantle. Well, okay. I'm sure Michigan has others. I guarantee you a bunch of SEC teams have a bunch of these idiots lining up. And I say idiot with an endearing tone because again, <laughs> this guy's a hero and a legend. <laughs> um, So would you agree with that or do you disagree with that? Uh, to an extent. I mean, I think people have the ability to change their minds. So uh, maybe some have, you know, I don't think we really see it either on all this on either side. But overall, I mean, I went into that thing. I'm not getting anything out of this. Uh, go watch the Florida doc. Go yep. watch um, the U. Uh, I, I think USC had one also. I, I just don't expect much from Netflix. I'm sorry. No, it wasn't uh, the U, but I don't expect much from Netflix. When it comes to breaking down these sports stories, I just don't. And um, yeah, I wonder how much of it was like investigations mm -hmm. with the Stallions. Because you're right, uh, Swamp Kings was the biggest travesty of a documentary we've had in a long time. Yes, but this one, I wonder how much of it was. All right, this is an investigation. It's not closed yet. I don't know, but but yeah, you're right. I thought there was more to be desired. Yeah, and. <laughs> I saw Casey from Barstool posted about her. Yeah, I saw that. Dude, I just agreed with her. That that's the last thing I thought about doing during that um that doc was crying. And I'm listen, I'm not sitting here saying you can't have a special relationship with your mother. I think a lot of us guys well, hopefully with our mothers in our lives, as sons, we adore our mothers. Yep. Okay. Like, I, I don't – I get it, man. You love the game of football. You love Wolverine football because of your mom. But that that's not what I came here for. <laughs> well, that wasn't what I wanted to see. I don't, I got, I, I get, don't it tells a story that? about him. It, I, I, I appreciate it to an extent. But you know why we're here. Yeah. You know why we're watching this. And of course, like I said, I wasn't expecting much. But um, I did think there were some interesting things that were said in there. Sounds that in a way, uh, let's say, in a way, proves something. And I also thought, I'm sorry, I also think we also saw the neglect from a lot of your guys' fan base based on what was said in that. Such as, um, you know, Jim Harbaugh saying he didn't know who he was. Dude, you handed him a game ball with his name on it. Did like, Harbaugh I, ever say he didn't know who he was? Yes, he said, I didn't. I thought he said I didn't know about any of this. No, he said that too. But I could have swore he said he didn't know about. It. He didn't know the guy. Like not, uh, not, let's not say let's not say know the guy, but he, as in he didn't have much interaction with him in that. Like, but bro, you literally handed him a. I want to know how many people get game balls with their names on it from the University of Michigan. I want to know. I think Stallion says he was the only one. <laughs> you said what? I think Stallion said he was the only one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just the. <laughs> him, him saying he did not look like that guy and that he that was him. Like, and right then, I mean, if we're gonna make Dave Portnoy the voice of reason here, he comes right back after and says he told me that was him. And yeah, agreed. And his lawyer too. It was the ultimate. I've watched enough suits and lawyer shows in my day to know that mm -hmm. that was the ultimate lawyer response, where he said, "Yeah, I saw pictures of people alleged saying that this guy looked like Connor Stallions." Mm -hmm allegedly and it was the greatest non-answer that was kind of an answer yeah ever. i i mean also just him saying about the purchasing of tickets and saying he doesn't remember buying them Dude, when five seconds later he acknowledged that he bought those tickets and to sit there and 
I, I want to know how dumb does he think a lot of people are. I, I really want to know because. Well, I, I think he's, I think him and his legal team, I thought they framed the show yes. perfectly in that, in the, not the show, they framed the argument perfectly in that they said that they set up a, a timeline and a framework of him buying tickets. So if you notice at the beginning of the episode, he always mm-hmm. talked about going to games, buying tickets. And it, it, it sets up this pattern now that, oh, he always bought tickets. And it makes it a little more gray mm-hmm. and a little more clouded when it comes to accusing him of buying tickets for advanced scouting. Okay. Now let's I, – I get, I get where you're coming from. I get what you're saying. But now let's actually – let's think about it this way. If you – you just said that – He's probably the biggest Wolverine fan you've ever seen in your life, correct? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. And now he has the opportunity where he is a assist, a staffer on the team. He's on the sidelines for every U of M game. For what reason do you need to be buying tickets to other games? You're not going, bro. And and that's and that's why I'm like, how dumb do people think we are? And I, I think a lot yeah. of, let's say the Buckeye fan base, the Spartan fan base, and other people beyond – it's not so much that we care about you guys cheating. I, I guess as a Buckeye, we care to an extent. A lot of us do. But it's the it's the sheer nature that we believe the University of Michigan has. And I know you hate when I say it. You hate when I talk about how pompous I believe a lot of your fan base to be. But it's things like that that are annoying. The like, were you self-righteous, thinking, arrogance. Yes, and thinking that like when you when you buy tickets – to a game as a staffer, and you say you always want to go to college football games. My guy, if you are a staffer and you are a huge fan, as he said he was, you are not going to watch anyone else play when you have free free reign on the sidelines. Huh? You get to talk to the, the OC and the, and the DC during the game. For what? Why Why would you need to buy tickets to other games? And that's just... Yeah, yeah I think it, 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 it kind of indicates clearly that, like, he was... He was trying to cheat the system he was trying to push mm-hmm. the limits and i think that's this is what i i think i've confidently said all along it's gonna be so interesting interesting to see how the ncaa perceives this and how yes. they go about this because by rule did he actually break the rules people can make arguments for it they can make arguments against it did, did is him sending staffers to advance not staffers is he sending friends to send them video back he did they did say that he sent one staffer yeah yeah but so remember the rule was created back in the day and the rule says that you cannot send staff to go record games because of budgetary purposes Mm -hmm. that was the reason behind the rule and so if if in 2024 where obviously it's completely changed this rules comes obsolete now we've got helmet uh audio sits in the helmets now but in 2024 now if that him sending his buddies to go record is that technically against the rules yes okay explain because in the rules it says that pe- what you're not allowed to do is send people to other schools that have a that have a affiliation no, or hold, have affiliation or um i don't want to butcher the, the way they said it but basically anyone that has um any ties with the staffer or anyone that's like a, like I, I, i'm butchering it right now but that okay. is illegal. Assuming we'll have to pull up the, the actual rules here. Again, we're two idiots who don't have any law degrees. But again, <laughs> if, if it is something along the lines of and I won't hold your, your wording here as, mm-hmm. as possible, but if it is something along the lines of affiliation, it are is is that are those guys or his buddies affiliated to the university? Because they're affiliated in the same way I'm affiliated if I know a coach. So that's the one thing. The second, but, he's thing buy, is, but the, the problem is that he's buying the tickets. You're right. Well, that goes inside. And, and, and we do in the, like, like I said, we're not lawyers, but I, I do believe. Um, what, what's it called? They have the um, where I, I just had it on some tip of my tongue, but where it's very likely that you did it. It's I think likely is in the term, but um, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm anyways. He bought the tickets, and that's my problem with that. And eventually, we I mean, two plus two does not equal five. So, I mean, reasonable, un, reasonable, doubt, reasonable doubt, and I don't think he has that. I don't believe he has that. I think that he has shown that he did those things that were illegal, 
And uh, when it comes to who knows, I don't want to. I don't care about that. That's not the conversation for me. But well, I, I, I thought the, the guy's I think weird. That's important because if 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 he just buys tickets, that's that's mm -hmm. one thing. If the university and the life department foots the bill, that's a whole another animal. And we don't know that yet. And and <laughs> if, if if that were to happen, we're not talking like pr program banning, like suspension, but then you're in deep doo doo. You know, yeah. Yeah. If that if that comes out that that's the case, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother example. Mm. Uh, not example, a whole nother situation that we have to yeah. do. But but that's for the sake of my fanhood, I'm not gonna go down that route because that's not even there. I I do think the one tie that I thought was interesting was the Partridge connection. So he worked hmm. with linebackers, he was close with Partridge. Partridge got fired during the season mm -hmm. or asked to resign or whatever the official lingo terminology was. I thought that was a little interesting, a little suspicious. Yeah. So I think, yeah, same. Like I said before, nothing was learned, nothing was gained. It's the same things that same questions need to be answered. Mm -hmm. Who knew? We still don't know. And which, yeah, you know, where was the money coming from? And then how is the NCAA going to perceive what Stallions did? Because who am I to say what you're saying could be exactly how they perceive it? Mm -hmm. or it might not. Sure. Look at that. Look at us. Look at us lawyers. Let's start a law firm. <laughs> no. um, a couple other notes from it. Failed to cooperate. If I hear that again, when the NCAA says I, someone failed to cooperate, mm -hmm. GTFO. I don't oh, okay. want any of I, that. I'm fine. I'm, if you want to feel that way, that's fine. Um, shout, shout out to Iowa. You know, uh, you know. Oh yeah, gosh, take, yeah. Take taking their take. No, hey, Kurt Ferentz took like a man, unlike some other coaches. Um, stop. And then I'm uh, who am I missing? I'm missing one more program. Oh, I think one more program today got in trouble. De Demarco Murray, Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah. Now those two programs have something in common that you guys don't. Shut up. <laughs> self reporting, self reporting, and I have said on this show plenty of times. If you self-report like Tennessee did, they'll come down way lower than they would have. With the, like they would, and I don't think they're gonna come down on you guys like a hammer now. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's, yeah. But now we're getting into just the 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 stupidness of the NCA and what are we what are we really doing here with some of this crap? Like it's just. It, and this is another conversation I don't want to get into right now. But yeah. what happened with Ferentz? What happened with Murray? Are you kidding me? Like really? And Ferentz is sitting out for the Illinois State game. I don't know who Oklahoma plays this week. I'm mm -hmm. sure nobody. So it's whatever, but it's, it's all stupid. Um, are you – I think the question we have to ask is, are you Brohio? He was white. You can edit stuff, my friend. Well, actually, hold on. You know what? I don't want to uh, – I don't know what he is. But No. <laughs> Okay, formal announcement. We are all bro high, yo. <laughs> it's like Viva Vendetta. You guys we are, are just one. Movement. Yes. Okay, so on the show, live mm -hmm. on air. Well, this isn't live, but recorded here. Garrison is not bro high, No, I, I I guarantee you. I I don't know when I had time to go over and do that. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> and you would have known. You would have known. I don't yeah, think I'd be able to keep that in. You know? You think you know people, man. Mm. Um, yeah, that was hilarious. <clears throat> um, oh, what was the other thing I was going to add to that? Oh, I love, I absolutely love the power of the message boards. I think that is cool. And I think, and this is going to go into another another tangent here, Garrison. I think the message board impacts that ha was had on this was is hilarious because we see the yeah. same thing in politics. We see the same thing with, like, like let's look at the Trump. I don't know if I say this on YouTube, but the Trump attempt, and how much news is flying around, and it's just like it's people getting to the news and putting news out there first. Yep. And some stuff is is right, a lot of stuff is wrong, but some stuff is right. And and as mm -hmm. long as people can figure out how to sift through it all, you can get that's your fastest route to potential facts. Yes. And I thought that was just. I thought that was kind of cool. So shout out to all those nuts on the message boards. <laughs> Even though it was a disservice to my team. 
I hope Michigan will go in full force next time the opportunity arises because you guys can do something shady too. Um, other things, Stallions confirmed. You talked about this already, but Stallions being on the sidelines, there was part of me that was like that wasn't really him. I know the NCAA came out and said that was him. Mm. And the central. Fact that he, and central. Oh yeah, and central. And the fact that he just denied it, and then Portnoy is like, yeah, that was him. Yeah, that was just hilarious. Like, dude, you're insane. And I, 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 I want to. I want to point this out to you, Bryce. Please. Oh, uh, actually, this isn't to you. This is this is the Stallions as a for, as a uh, member of the forces. I mean, you were a Marine and I was a Navy, so it's a little bit different. You're my little brother. But um, you know, I'm I'm reading this here. Honesty, integrity, respect, and accountability. Those is your those are your honor of code. And my friend, you not my friend, my guy, you do not show any of that okay we can move on well <laughs> it would it would be it's all in the eyes of the holder man i think it's honorable integrity but oh come to- <laughs> <it's their own. laughs> oh my gosh um, let's, get, let's get some buckeye news well okay the, 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 oh speaking of buckeyes you guys hacked into stanley's email Somebody on your side, Ryan Day's brother, someone, hacked in. I believe that now. Disgusting. Chris Ballas said they tried to um, talk to the conference about it. Then they didn't care. Or then said they didn't care. And I, I'm not going to entertain that conversation. Yeah, we saw that. They Well, they, they wouldn't talk about it because they know they did it. Because, no, because oh. it's stupid. I'm not going to entertain that. Okay. <laughs> it's out there. Um, and then, It's been out there for a long time. Isaiah Hole's been crying about that for months on end now it's just, <laughs> nothing's come from it nothing concrete has come from that so dan wetzel also says that other schools are doing this i thought that was interesting so i think your point of saying no one else is doing this show me the proof show me the proof dan wetzel and everyone else that someone else is going around stealing signs by buying tickets to p- future opponents games until then that's that okay it's up to you to believe last thing i have on this is this is not you, my friend, but shocking. In the same way that you're going to criticize Michigan fans for thinking that they are pure, holy, and blameless, mm-hmm. I can't believe how many Buckeye fans think that same thing. It is crazy. I tweeted a clip from Pate's show about how nothing's going to really come from this. Mm-hmm. It, did, it did pretty oh. well. It got a lot of Buckeyes responding to it, and they said, Oh, they love you. They they were well they were just saying like oh real so this is reality it's all about money like NCA it's all uh, the, you can just get away with stuff it's like yeah guys that's college football that's the NCAA that's the power yeah. of these big brands and there are so many people clutching pearls saying oh we would never do this so it's a dirty game it's a dirty game that I think I'm realizing a lot of folks on your side didn't realize that. Yeah. In the same way that a lot of folks on my side didn't realize that. So that's Stallion's talk. Um, anything else from that? No. It's been a, we spent a long time talking. <laughs> we, did. we did. All right, so you want to dive into any uh, Buckeye news? Are there some starting announcements today? Yes. Um, first, Tegra Toshoba, he will be our right guard, which is the last position we had to, to name a starter for. Um you know, he was a big recruit for us coming out of high school. And, I'm, and you know, it, there's been a battle for that right guard spot. I'm okay if you play the bigger guy. You know, he's a, he's a massive man, uh, I think over 315. And so, um, oh, good for him. Uh, Sonny Styles was named starting Lowell linebacker. Uh, I don't think that was much news, but they did announce that. And then... The big news. Urban Meyer announces that J.J. Smith will be a starting wide receiver for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, I put a question on our SBS account. Wait, you I'm, said Urban Meyer did that? I'm sorry, Ryan Day. Oh, I was like, Ryan Day, bring, sorry. Him sorry about that. that. Right. Do you know who the last wide receiver was to start as a true freshman at Ohio State? I posted this earlier. Huh? I do, I do not know that, no. Take a guess. 
the last freshman wide receiver at wide receiver to start at Ohio State? Chris Campbell. No. And he started at no, he, I think he started at corner, huh? Chris Carter. Nope, you 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 were around you were close. You were close to the first one. Get one more. Close to first uh, not David Boston. You were closer when you were at, when you said Chris Gamble. You were closer there. I don't know. Who is it? Ted Ginn Jr. Mm, I should have guessed that. That dude I, I, that when I posted that question on our page, I I didn't know the answer to it. I just I was wondering, and I looked it up, and sure enough, Ted Ginn Jr. Okay, but, that um, makes sense. I'm I'm really excited to see this kid play football. Um, I think he's a generational, once in a lifetime type of player. Um, I liken him to Julio Jones. Uh, he's a massive young man. He moves well, has great hips. Uh, been touted as the best football player to come out of South Florida in high school. And I saw a video the other day, Bryce, and they were asking all the football players, who's the fastest guy on the team? A lot of guys are saying Jeremiah. They say it's That's JJ. Crazy. That's crazy. And it's really cool. Um, you know, Jory commented on this, and I saw other – I've seen other Wolverine fans do the same. I think they also see what that kid's looking like. They, they I think it's – he's a different animal compared to some of the, our other wide receivers, including Marv. Coming in this early, I have a take. I think Marv's gonna be forgotten. I think Marv was was great. He was excellent mm -hmm. on teams that didn't win anything, and you are just always have talent at the receiver position. And he's being followed by a kid like this. I think Marv's gonna be forgotten. I would agree with you if Chris Olave, uh, Wilson, JSN didn't come before Marv, if. Uh, it's San Antonio Holmes, Michael Jenning, Jenkins, um, Ted Ginn, did it come before them? Uh, CC Chris Carter, uh, Joey Galloway, David Boston. We will never be short of wide receivers at Ohio State. No one will be forgotten. I do, but you, there was a few good ones you just you forgot about. No, I, I just gave you some of the names. I wasn't going to run through all the names. I just wanted to give. No, you I know, names but that's my point. Care. Is that if I like if I go back on some Michigan receivers, right? That's, <laughs> but. If you go, like, you didn't list Paris Campbell, you didn't list uh, Devin Smith, is that his name? Well, I, I, would, I mean, before I named De Paris Campbell, I'd probably say, uh, uh, shoot, Kurt, I would say, like, Curtis Samuel. I would say he's about H-back, mostly. Terry McLaren, McLaurin, McLaurin, whatever his name is. McLaurin, yeah, I mean, you know, like, Terry? but they, I don't think Terry was Chris Olave and those guys in college. Now, maybe he could have been if he had a different system. But, I mean... I right, don't well, know. Thought, proof of thought. Yeah, yeah. All I right. Get you off, off course. Marv, Marv, be forgotten. Are you crazy? <laughs> That's a hot take. Write that down. Book it. Oh man. If he fades off in the abyss too, in in Arizona, and becomes kind of a, you know, because it doesn't have a quarterback, or whatever. Kyler can throw the ball. All right, we'll see. Mez can protect him. Yeah, no, that was big news. I was very, very surprised by that. Yeah. So who who's the What's the depth chart for receiver? Ibuka? Ibuka, Jeremiah on the outside. Or, I'm sorry, Tate and Jeremiah on the outside, I'm guessing, is going to be. Uh, Emeka is more more of a slot guy, but he does venture out. And Brandon and Brandon Ennis. Those those four. Okay, who, so I four. Believe, who I believe is someone you need to watch. When he's on the field, just watch him. Yeah. He, um, explosive athlete. Uh uh, by the way, I mean, there's a guy I don't think a lot of people are talking about. It's because he just got on campus, and I don't want to. I know a lot of the, you Michigan fans are going to, in the comments and say, "Oh, we talk about wide receivers." A Buckeye fan talk about wide receivers. I get it. Mylon Graham just got on campus, and that guy is making moves up that depth chart. And I think by the end of the year, you will see a healthy dose of him. Okay. Yeah. And James Peoples, freshman running back, back. yeah, at Texas. Yep. Yeah, I thought that I talk about nothing news. I think nothing news was that neither running back was named a starter. That's mm -hmm. I think people oh, feel about that. That's nothing. we also named uh, our punter 
uh, McLarty, six foot seven, two fifty five, and can punt at ninety yards. That's time. What, what, do you, what do you think his over under rush yards is this year? I say seven. The punter. Yeah, how many do you think he's over seven rush yards? Well, I'm confused. Wait, the punter rushing? Yeah. If you, if, if, you, if you had a six foot seven, two hundred fifty five pound safety, I mean punter who's somewhat athletic, would you not would give <laughs> a chance? To, you give a chance? Yeah, I don't hate that. Uh, uh that's good, man. That's good. Any mm-hmm. other uh any other news there? Um I feel like that's yeah, the starting line I mean the the, the offensive line is in place. Yeah, and I, I want to also bring this up about uh, just some cool football talk real quick. Uh, so I've on our show, I've said to you and other people, com- comparing what Will Howard was at Kansas State is completely different from what he's going to be at Ohio State. A, because of um, the coaching and tutelage of Ryan Day and his system and how he sees the quarterback position and Chip Kelly also. And also the fact he has better athletes. And in there, he was talking about how he gave credit to his guys at Kansas State, but said it's different up here. And he's talking about how, you know, to the naked, to the eye of the average viewer, and some, maybe some quarterbacks, they told him if a guy's on our wide receiver's hip, he's open. He's open. And he, he, met, and he talked about how it matters about, you know, the angle, the placement of the ball, and all of that, and just saying, you know, the guys he has at wide receiver, I'm not like, that's why I've never. Said Ohio State's going to run the ball 60% of the time this year. We still have the ability to go over the top of these wide receivers. Now, Will Howard has to get better at throwing the ball deep. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. a Achilles heel of his. But, um, I mean, if, we're gonna, if you're going to throw a 50-50 ball, we have the guys for it. Yeah. Yeah, then you do. You do. Yeah, he's not going to be asked to do much, man. He's not going to be asked to do much. There's enough talent around him. Just don't turn the ball over. Yep. Yep. Be uh, a better JT Barrett. <laughs> that's not high praise come from you, though. No, it's not. All right. Depth chart here from Michigan mm-hmm. at this release today. Interesting. A couple interesting things of note. Instant reactions from me. One is, I'm going to start. It's not the, the hottest take, but Zeke Barry started nickel. Love that. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be a stud. Um, and then I, I love our safety room. That was one I was concerned about, but now I love it. Absolutely love. It. I, I would get more concerned about it. I was talking to Lawson. I was talking to Lawson earlier. He said they they said they plan on playing five different safeties this year. Well, and I don't know if that's year. a good. And I don't know if that's always a good. That's not a good thing to me. They did that. I mean, last year you had Macari Page, Quentin Josh, and Keon Sab. Um, Zeke Barry played at the beginning of the year a little bit. Um, did I say Rod Moore? So you had four. You said you had you said Rob Moore. Yeah, I, yeah. Four. I, I mean, if you want to count Zeke Barry because he played a little bit at the end of the year, I guess. Yeah. But we but we knew, without question, who was starting for you guys. Even though I thought Keon Sab should have been in Macari Page's spot. Yeah. I don't think you are in the same situation. You, Rob, there was a gap between Rod Moore and every other single guy in that safety room. Yeah. Right, a, no doubt. Like, Rod Moore. And it's a, a significant awesome. gap. It was a big loss, but but I like I like that Mangum kid out of state. I like if you, if you want his skinny behind to be right there when Junkins comes up, be my guest. That guy is that guy is small. And, I, and again, I don't want to hear you fans boast about. Uh, and I, I understand some guys can make you look worse. Coaches can make you look worse than you are if you don't know where you are. But we've been bashing on this show the Michigan State secondary for not on the show, but. For years now, we both have. I don't want to. I don't want to hear you big him up now. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, he's getting all the love now. We'll see. We'll see. I Mm. like it. I like it. I hear Jerry Jerry Hill. Why can't I? Jair. Jair Hill. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. He's looking good at corner. So that's Mm. that's great because that's another. I don't think that's hard to do with your receivers, but. And I'm ignoring that. This right here. This one was surprising because everyone was talking about this. Evan Link, right tackle, freshman, beating out Gentry and Tristan Bounds. Like that, that one, that one surprised me. But yeah. I'm not going to second guess the uh, the offensive line. And then 
And it looks like this right here. Alex Orji, number one. We'll see. I've expressed we'll see. my concerns. We'll I've see. Expressed it last night on our show. Um, the Big Ten, Big Ten, Big Team Rivalry show, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yep, dude. No, awesome team, dudes. team rivalry. Team rivalry. Team rivalry. Yeah. Go yes. check them out. Awesome dudes. All right. On to week one, baby. I'm so I I'm I'm here. Um, I can't wait. Oh, uh, we haven't really we even talked about this. We still doing our picks this year? Our yes. five picks. Good All call. right. Now, everyone, I want to let you know this. The average. We're going to close up here, but the average professional uh, sports gambler hits around fifty-two to fifty-three. If they're lucky, fifty-four percent. I hit over seventy percent last year. I, I now I don't I don't expect that this year. But if you want money, if you want bang for your buck, you listen to the Scarlet Blue Show. Yes. That's it. The proof's in the pudding, friends. Yes, it is.